written some code chunks and some exercises from Jenny Bryan's excellent uh, player tutorials that she has on her website. Um, and then next week, we will be diving straight into the, the docs, um, which is what we did in the Deep Liar um, book club. So let me share my screen and pop my week two RMD. So yeah, what I did was I kind of read through the tutorials and I tried to look at, okay, what are the bits that are like really important for someone to know just to get used to per a little bit, just to see it in action. Um, and at different times I did kind of leave stuff out because I thought, oh, that might be too, too niche or that might be something that we really want to dig into in later weeks. And I don't want to like half go into it and then someone else when they present it feel like they don't need to or that whatever. Like I thought, we'll just try to get the core. Um, so there are two packages we're going to be using. They're per um, and repursive. So I think repursive was actually made by Jenny, um, Brian, and is like it has a bunch of lists that are nested lists and stuff that you can use to practice doing stuff. So we'll load those. Um, oops, I will clean the console. So we'll load those up. Um, one of the things she kind of says is that like, as per really helps you work with lists and vectors, it's good to know a few of the properties of lists and vectors um, and a few of the differences. And one of the things about vectors is like, it can only have um, one data structure. So like this will work fine and it will print, it will print like the list of integers. And um, this will work, but you'll notice, you'll notice in the output that because one of the data types is a, a string, um, they all get coerced into the same data type. And instead of coercing this one into an integer, because the other two are um, like integers, I think it just does the first one, but let's, let's check that. So if you've got one, two, three, undo my comment. I feel like, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's because uh, it doesn't know usage, because I think the memory usage uh, for a character is more than a integer. I think that's the reason. So in terms of the one, even if you have the one bigger one or the uh, how do I say that? So the one that occupies the maximum space in memory is what gets gets assigned. Because otherwise, the, that particular value will lose. Um, I think. Yeah, um, that's a good explanation. And um, that's cool. So yeah, that's good to know. So like bigger memory allocation to string. So coerce to string. Um, we'll leave that in for when this gets uploaded. But then this one is gonna um yeah, again convert um these two to characters, uh, of course, even though then this one doesn't even look like a number, which is why. I included it, but this same property um, will not happen with lists. So like you can see in this one, each one is uh, the data type it was entered in. And to see the difference, well, here, these ones and twos there without strings. Um, and you can kind of see, right? Like there's a different element for each part of the list and you don't really see that with the vector or you don't see it in the same way. Um, so when we want to index these things, um, vector, you can use the square brackets. Um, she does go into some things about like the square brackets functions and stuff. I think I just decided not to because it's a bit low level, but you get the second element um, by doing this, then you get third element by putting three in here. Um, you can drop elements by using the negative syntax. So if you want to keep one and three, you drop two um, and third or first third. And then if you want to get rid of all of them, but just keep the last thing, which I intentionally made three, two, one, or I can see now maybe isn't the most helpful. Um, but I wanted to show that like um, it won't find a one here, if there's a one there, this is looking at the first index position, which is which is this one. Um, 
yeah, you, you can drop, you say like not this stuff and then a vector. And um, you can name these things. So if you've got a named vec, oops. You can see like, well, we said one equals one and we said two equals two and we said three equals three. And then when we print the named vec, we see like one is one, two is two, three is three. Um, and when you have your named vec, yeah, okay, let's look at that next. Um, well, you can do the same with a list um, and print the named list. Oops. Print the named list, not the named list. And you see, it's actually like, I kind of prefer this, how it looks here. I don't know why this, they're just different, but this is, seems more explicit to me. Like this thing is called one and it's one, or like that you can, seems really obvious that you can index this like this nicely. So you can, when you have to index by name, you have to put the string. So you, um, you index like that. Whereas this one tell like the list essentially tells you like write the dollar sign and the one. This one doesn't tell you that you need to write a string. And um, you can get all of them. Ah, hi Oluwafemi. Nice to see you again from Shiny. I think this is your first time in in this club, right? So just so you know, if we're going through Per, we're just looking at Jenny Bryan's tutorials and we've just gone over a couple of the principles, the, the basic facts about lists and vectors. Um, so named vec, it's like, you can't do this. Um, and I think you can't do this either, right? Like for sure. Uh, and you couldn't do this, like this doesn't make sense anyway, but yeah, you can't do this. Uh, so that's the difference between lists. Um, whereas for lists, you you definitely, you can do this. Um, now, I don't know if you can also do this. Yeah, okay, cool. So you get more indexing options with lists. Um, but you'll often see that there are two square brackets sometimes, or there's like one square bracket. Um, and what's the difference? Um, well, this one, you'll notice... Anyways, my list. This is like returning a list because this thing, uh, we do class on this one, well, it's list, but if we do name list uh, one and we do class, right now it's the, num the numeric, the number. And um, so that's something to be aware of. That can be a little bit of a gotcha uh, when you're doing things with list, you might, try to extract stuff from a list and you think you're getting the element, right? You think you're getting this numeric, um, but what you actually get is the, the list um, or that thing inside a length one list. Um, and it's maybe quite subtle, but it, it does have important things later on. Um, yeah, these two, they would be, they'd be identical in this case. Um, but one of the things Jenny, um, she kind of points out is like there are tools explicitly for um understanding your lists and she has these questions that are like they're questions to ask yourself to like make sure you understand the structure of your list um so what length is the list and kind of what length are the elements in each component or what depth um do the components have when you're do, when you're working with a list rather than a vector, you need to ask: Do your components have the same data structure? So are they homogeneous? And it's really helpful when they do have names, but you need to check if they do have names. Um, and as you work through them, this is a good place to start. Like if you get a new list, um, if you get a new list that you you haven't really seen before, and then you just go through these, try to figure the answers out to these. Um, and often writing the answers out will like get it really, really clear in your head. Um, okay, I think they're, they're definitely something you should come back to. Um, but let's say you want to be a bit more, we're going to see um, how do we figure out the answer to those questions. Well, we'll take this list of Game of Thrones characters um, from Per, uh, or Recursive. And if you like use the console 
it's um yeah you can see like okay at the bottom there's there's 30 so there are 30 things in the first thing of this list or just say like this has length 30 um but that's not to say that like there are only 30 things in this list because each thing in that first list well that has different numbers of things in it um so you'd get you might get a bit confused if you start doing things like this uh, whereas structure or str shows you kind of a nicer a nicer ui uh you can go up to the top should we and you can see like this is a list of 30 um and then inside like the first element of this list well that's a list of 18 so if you say got one and you put length this should equal 18 and it does so that's what that's telling you um when you use structure there are and she does this in the tutorial but i think i've got them a bit further down there are some cool arguments in structure um as structure is not like the point of this thing we won't go into them too much but just as like a flag there are like things you can do here um like is it vec length or is it max length or something somewhere well they help you to like you see how i had to scroll all the way up in my console to get to the top you can make structure <clears throat> print fewer things um but anyway let's let's have a look at a couple of more of the differences between lists and vectors um so here's a vector of numbers um and one of the good things about R is a lot of its operations are vectorized. So when you feed in a vector to the operators, like in this case, uh, like the exponent, well, it will do it to every element in that vector. Um, so if you do this, yeah, you'll see one, four, nine. Um, but then one of the key differences, I guess, between lists and vectors is, well, this won't work. Um, so this operator is vectorized, goes over vectors, but it's not vectorized, I suppose, if you like, over lists. Um, oh, I meant to set, yeah. So what do I want to do with this? I think I moved the order. Um, but if you wanted to, well, let's just say two. If you wanted to like shorten what structure prints so that you could get easier to this information, uh, a list of 30, we'll just let it print the first two like the structure of the first two. Um, but we're gonna do, what are we gonna do? Oh yeah, say in this list of got characters, well, we wanna look at the first one. So we'll get this object, the first character. Um, and now we see like in this list, there are names um, for different attributes or different pieces of information. You can get all of them by this so uh, anything you see here you should be able to index with the dollar sign of this list to access that information um so if you take this you can do this wait type name and you see like the first character in that list was theon Greyjoy. um but when we start to get on to like why her is really good um let's say we wanted to get the first 10 characters um and we wanted to get all of the names of the first 10 characters well if we do this we're gonna have like a nasty surprise um we can't even get first 10 elements of the list like this um so maybe you'd think well if we do this if we get got one to 10, oops, where we can get the elements of the list. Well, if we do this and look for the name, uh, maybe it will work, but no, it won't work. Um, and again, it goes back to that thing. This dollar sign is a function and, and this function is, I would guess it's vectorized, but I don't actually know if it would do this for vectors, we could check. Um, named list. 
Let's go one to two. Name. No, okay. Doesn't like it either. Um, but yeah, this is this dollar dollar sign function that helps you get the uh like attributes or the objects associated with a different object. Well, that's that's not vectorized. So if we want to extract um the names of the first one to ten character, um, that's where the map family so per is gonna be really helpful. Um we'll start just looking at map. Um we're not gonna look at the docs properly today or anything, but like we'll get a little preview of them. You got all this information when you type question mark or help. Um it does say what the arguments are and stuff. Um, but when we do map family next week, we'll get deep into these. But when you're using just map, so per map. The output is predictable in its data structure. So it's always going to be a list. Um, you can't really do anything about that when you're using map, apart from use some of the other variants, which we'll we'll get a look at. Um, and they they output different data types, which at first is difficult to get your head around, I think. Um, but as you use them more, you get really used to like it being good that you know exactly what type of object is going to come out of the various functions. Um, so again, this is from Jenny Bryan's tutorial, where she shows there's kind of a shortcut to use map for extract, like extracting information. Um, and what we can do is we can feed in the list. So if we want the names of the first one to 10 characters, well, we can get that list. So make sure it makes sense is we see it's this list you got number eight nine ten so we've got the first ten and we can we can just feed in the the name of the thing that we want and in this case we want the name um so we'll feed in just name and we get a list of the ten so remember the first one was theon Greyjoy, and then we get all of them um but just because it's we were looking for a name and we had to type name, um, a name is often a different thing. Well, not a different thing, but name is something we use a lot in our. If you remember from the names of dot, um, oops, anyway, what's my got now? Uh, it's in each one, wasn't it? Um, well, anyway, let's look at born. So we can get the, the point in time when each is born, and then we had a missing thing. And um, so that's a nice shortcut to extract information from lists. Um, we were able to get the top, the first 10, by making a list of the first 10 and then just asking for the name. And if we look for something like that wasn't in here, then I'm pretty sure. I don't know, Tower. Like what tower do they live in? Well, it's all going to be null because there is no tower attribute in that list. Um, okay, so when we when we did this, no matter which one we do, right, it's always a list. So this is a list. This is a list. And this one is a list. And it's a really looks kind of like a silly list because uh, it's just every object in it is null. But that's what map does. It returns a list for us. Um, so I was wondering, because I've been talking for a long time now, did anyone use this before? Like, or do you did you did you know about this? Because I didn't know about this little shortcut. No. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, you what well, you'd use this to extract instead of like pluck or something or. Yeah, this is new to me. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I think probably previously what I would have done would be the two square brackets and then passing name or born in it. Yeah, what? because that's in the tutorial, like passing the, as the function, like, I never ever use this. Is it like this? Wait. Do you, is yeah. that what you 
And then you put name. Yeah. Or this one, because that will leave that will preserve the thing. Yeah, I feel like this one's super ugly. And uh, that one is in the tutorial. Um yeah, no, I think I was referring to um uh, like I guess not using the one to ten portion, but just using GOT and then double quotes name in quotes in close double double square brackets. Yeah, so if you wanted like all of them, you could get like yeah. this or something. And I yeah. think for that reducing it one to ten would be probably something I would do as a follow-up step, like pipe it into something. Um, but yeah, I, I have never used this way of doing it. Yeah, because I but I think this is like when I look at this, my head's like, well, why does that work? And it's be it's because this is a function, right? Um she it does go through some of that stuff in her notes. But it seems like if code should be readable, like seems tough to get your head. Out. I guess once you know it, you know it. Whereas this is like it's a really nice way potentially of yeah. doing this. Um okay, so another way, and I also didn't know this, was like you can um let's say if you want the names. Uh so we've got our list. And then we got one. And then we got just have a look at the names really quickly. Why is what have I done wrong? Names on God, just on the script uh, list name. List name like this? No, no, no. I meant uh, names on GOT. Yeah, I like that. But it's not, it's um it's doing something. It's it's okay, it's like oh. this. Yeah, yeah. Needed the element. That that's the gotcha, right? Is like if you look at this, this give this returns me a list. Um, like the first thing in all of the list, this returns me this. Okay. And this thing has no names. It's only when you get into this that you got the names. Um which yeah. I think I <laughs> still getting caught out by that, even though I know and had actually prepared that for this thing. So that's fun. Um, but like the third index of the names of each object inside here is name. So if you wanted to extract the names, or if, uh, you could do it this way. You could do it the square bracket way, which I'm actually just going to make sure I leave in for um, the thing. Uh, and you could also do it by index. So this one gives you those names again of the first 10, um, which is, again, I didn't know that you could do that, but it's this, it's like this cool shortcut. If you don't supply a function or something, it's like, well, I'll just try to extract stuff of that name or of that index, whatever you give me. Um, but then, okay, so, this is giving us a list. Um, and that list might not always be precisely what we want. So if we use one of the very um, like map character, well, that returns us a vector. So let's just do this. And that, that's like a character vector. So the CHR gives us um, a character vector. So what did map character actually do that map didn't? It's like a, I guess it did, um, we'd say, let's get it this way, map got 110 name. Um, if we do this, like I actually don't know uh, if this is exactly what it's doing, but I guess this is all it's doing, right? Yeah, so it's just unlisting for us. Um, I don't know if it actually does. Oops. Mm, it does something else, I guess. Maybe that we'd have to go properly looking in the package to know, but it seems like at least it's functionally the equivalent of just doing this, like unlisting that output 
of that list into character. Um, but okay, I think most of like the benefit of using per or most of the things people want to do with per, they come in the next part of Jenny Bryan's tutorials. And that's when you start using this schema, which is um, something that we should all keep in mind is like, you've got your map function, you've got your list, and then you've got the actual function that you want to apply or map over this list. Um, so let's take a quick look. We'll just see uh, in the documentation that um, map takes ellipsis, which for everyone in Dplyr will kind of be really used to now. Um, ellipsis just lets you feed in an arbitrary number of things into stuff. <laughs> I know things into stuff isn't like the nicest way of putting it. Um, but the things in this case, well, they're whatever you put in. And then the stuff is the function. So all of the things you put in here, they get uh, like slid in to whatever you put as the function. Um, and an important thing to, to point out uh, that Jenny points out is that this stuff in here should be, you should think of them as like static arguments, um, which is to say that map will map over your list. So, okay, let's let's do another one. When using ellipsis, you've got something like this, you've got your list, your function, and you've got dot, dot, dot. Uh, and actually, where dot, 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 so your additional arguments to your function. And um, what map doesn't do is map doesn't let you put in like a list here and it won't then, well, it will let you put in a list, sorry, but what it won't do with that list is it won't go through each element of the list and apply it to the other element of your list that you wanted to. Um, which if you've never used Per or you're not used to this stuff, that might be really confusing. You might think you could, you've got a list of 10 items here. Well, if you put 10 items in here, they'll each go, say, that argument will go to one in each list. Um, we need different functions for that. And we're not going to, we're going to look at them at the end of this, but we're not going to look into yeah. them now. Yeah. So when we PMAP would be those variants to to look at more than one list. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. I'm thinking that, so this ellipsis or dot, 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 is it, you know, something like, you know, if my function was a sum function and then I wanted to pass na dot rm is equal to true. So this is how you will pass because this apparently yeah. is only supposed to contain the function name and not the parameters or the arguments inside it. So comma, you give the arguments. And I, I don't recall, but some other um, functions probably have a similar format to like I don't know across or somewhere yeah so yeah you would feed in na dot rm equals true and I guess that would be for all the 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 named functions but there would be in different functions there would be positional arguments right like let's say for sum if we get sums uh documentation sum also takes in dot 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 which is interesting um so that's why like if you wanted to do i think it would be better to not use code for this actually um but you would have to explicitly state na dot rm equals true in the map yeah to make it na dot rm but there will be other functions and perhaps we'll come to them at different times that are like because some takes like a positional argument or ellipsis in this case and allows you to put all your stuff into there, like they won't be named. But there would be other functions. Um, I don't think of a good one. And if anyone can think of one, let me know where there's an argument that you have to, there's a, like a, an argument you have to give an argument for. So that it'd be like a positional argument and it won't come with a default value followed by ellipsis followed by a bunch of named arguments. Um, 
if you follow like the, the design guides recommendations. And I, I think if you put, so you have a like, let's just do a dummy function. It's like this. And you've got like data and then you've got dot, dot, dot. And then you've got like na.rm equals true. I'm pretty sure if you were like mapping on a list, like okay, this is it's obviously isn't going to work, but like dummy function, um, you, if you didn't specify here data and you just called it data frame and you had like data frame, it's a data dot frame, like an empty one. I don't think it would have a problem with that. Like, I don't think you'd have to, maybe you would. Um, but I feel like you wouldn't. You couldn't skip over all of this and then just put true and expect it to know that this true is na.rm. But I think you could with the positional. I mean, that would be worth just checking. Like to do it properly, you'd have to do this. Um, yeah, it's a good question because ellipsis can can be very confusing. Um, kind of a bugging me that I can't think of a good function that has this setup. Because there, there will be loads of them. Uh, let me put that as a to do for next week. Find a good function with uh, argument. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll flag that and we'll come back to that next week because it is a good question and it will be very important. Um, numerical, com numerical complex or logical like this. Mm. I wonder if Matt tells us. I don't, do you know um, Arthur or Shah or Oluwath Amy? Do any of you guys know the answer to that? There's no example that's springing to mind. Yeah. Cool. Let's uh, let's flag it for to come back to because that's an interesting question. Um, we'll find we we'll find out the answer. Um, but yeah, the key thing is that like the arguments that go into dot dot dot, they don't get mapped over. Like they get chucked in those exact arguments to the function call. And that function call applies individually to every element in the list. But if you fed in a list into dot, 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 it wouldn't try to match up dot, like the my list and then the arguments and go, okay, pass the first thing of dot, dot, dot into the first thing of my list. Pass the second thing of dot, dot, dot into like the second thing of my list. It will expect you to put in essentially just the arguments as they should be every time the dummy function in this case is called. Um, but yeah, so let's get some lists to like demonstrate this stuff. So Jenny made a couple of lists, well, so one list and she applied some names um, and take a look at aliases and just minimize this. And um, we've got like a character. So we set the names, right, of got cars or got characters as aliases. Um, and those eight of the aliases list and what we set as the name is the character's actual name so we've got a list called aliases and each of the first element or each of the elements in the list is a character name and then inside each character's name or like the element where the character has the name or well, there's this um other list and this list is all of their aliases um there's a lot of alias <laughs> names going on here, but I hope that it didn't sound very clear to me. Um, but I think it will become clear just as we look at it. Um, so one of the things we can do with map um, is like we can feed in an existing function to map. Um, and that's what I mean by an existing function is like something that was defined before we called map. And we'll see like why that makes sense in a minute, but we define this function, my function, and what it does is it takes an argument x um, and for every, well, not for every, but for that argument x, 
what it does is it pays together all of the um, elements of X. So it kind of expects that you're going to hand it a list. Um, but if we look at like Theon Greyjoy um, and we just do this, like paste on this and collapse equals, uh, we'll get each of them because paste is vectorized as well. Uh, we will have each of them separated by uh, the the or um, that has a string. Um, so if we wanted to do that for each of them, if we didn't know per, we'd write them all out, um, like we'd do aliases, aliases, the on gray joy, and then like paste. And it'd be really painful, and I'd hate to do this. I, I, I almost wouldn't be able to do this more than once without getting really upset. Um, but you do that, and then yeah, you do, do that. And it's just, I don't know, it, it feels horrible. And you don't want to end up typing loads or copying and pasting loads. So instead, you send um, the aliases list to Matt. You send your function, and um, then it just does it for you. So now you've got a nice list where each of them has their aliases squashed together. Um, yeah, so, so with sort, so decreasing, let's have a good Oops. The question from all of them is like, if we say that sort is like a, an additional argument, this kind of, yeah, this one, I think this, we could try it with this actually. Let's, let's do that at the end. Um, weirdly though, like this is, I guess, cause it's a base function. It kind of breaks the idea where you're supposed to put ellipsis in here, like after the data in the ellipsis before this is called like a detail i think um so before the details but we could and i want but i wonder if that won't work because this thing is not based here um but anyway we, we can look at that at the end um so the aliases uh we mapped them we got them all separated um but let's say like one of the drawbacks of this approach is you'll often be using um, a function that someone else has written. And say if you wanted to like change um, the thing in here, like, okay, let's have it so that it collapses by something else. Or well, can anyone see like, I guess I've kind of written the answer, um, but like what happens here? Does this code run? If it does, what's the output? And is that what we wanted? What, what do you guys think? Shouldn't we have like an unused, uh, unused um, parameter there for collapse because it's inside of your function definition from my phone? Yeah, as in like in here, this this function only takes x, so like this thing should be unused, right? Is what you, yeah you're saying because like there's no way that my function knows what to do with collapse. So that's what I think should happen. Um, yeah, okay. So we get unused argument. Um, so what I'd have to do to fix this, uh, so let's, actually, let's not show the fix. Let's just show like a different way of doing it. And then we can talk about after how you fix stuff like that, if you want to do it this way. Um, but let's say I want to separate by, by this. Um, well, a different thing that I can do with per is I can feed in, um, so like, say this was my own custom function, but I can feed in that original function paste as it was, and paste does take the collapse argument. So I can just paste it all in like this, use the ellipsis to pay, to send collapse equals into paste. And then this one, it will work. Um, and you see the output is always separated by the semicolon now. Um, 
which can be like, wait, yeah, this actually isn't an anonymous function, so I didn't mean to write that. Um, but here we can get used to the anonymous function. Um, with So what? let's do it with an anonymous function because function of x and then base x. Right. Yeah, it does the same thing. Um, I wonder, though, I should have checked this. If we make a, oops, okay, I think this is going to work. Um, Is you, the anonymous function doesn't take two arguments, right? Like it only wants x. Oh, it does. Okay. So yeah, you could use the anonymous function to do this, um, but instead of using just the x, where well, you feed in collapse. But then basically, what you did is fix this function by adding the collapse argument, um, and you just didn't name this function my fun. Hey, that's cool. I never used to use anonymous functions like this. Um, but also in per uh, or in map, you can use the formula notation, um, which can be quite a bit more flexible. So when you're using all of these, this is dot x, this is dot f, um, and then in this case, this is ellipsis. But you can be a bit more explicit. You can say, like, okay, well, this is dot x, and this is dot f. And for your dot f, you don't have to do this, but you know, you could um, sort of work like this. I like to be a bit more explicit when I'm using formula notation because it kind of brings to mind that this dot x is what this is. Otherwise, the dot x seems a bit mysterious. Um, but yeah, you can make it do this with an anonymous function um, with the formula notation. And one of the cool things about the formula notation is it's really easy to like build pipes up with it um, and you're kind of going to need it anyway when you're doing map two and pmap um, so in here this is all part of the function so this is all dot f um, and we're linking multiple functions together by using pipe so what we do is we just check well which one's a kin slayer um, which one has an alias kinslayer, um, like which one can you find kinslayer inside their aliases? And we return like, well, for Theon Greyjoy, that's true. Uh, Asher Greyjoy, that's false. And Brienne of Tarth, that's false. But those are kind of the ways. Um, so let me put, this is existing functions. This is like um, anonymous. And this is like anonymous functions formula notation. You should actually go here, or you're already there. Okay, so that will stay in. Um, so you can as well. You can like build up I don't know, loads of things and just keep doing that. We're not going to do that now, but that's what you can do, and that's what you get for using the formula notation. You get access to do stuff like this. Um, now, there were some exercises, and I think we could do them all. So I, I have, like, done them here. Um, we've got map two. I think we should do them kind of as a group. Um, so under each one. I'm not, I don't want to nominate anyone, um, but I think between us, we should kind of discuss, like, well, what do we do here to... Um, to get the answer. How do we make a list of allegiances and that it has the characters house affiliations? Um, so let's, what do you guys think? Like, what do we do here? Okay. Like, where would we start? Well, 
we want to do this with map as well. We don't want to do this with like not map. So Jack, to, to, just to kind of parse this uh, the exercise here. So I, I get that we want a list of allegiances. Um, mm -hmm. And we want the character's house affiliation. So we want like two attributes, right? <laughs> um, I don't actually know. I, cause it's a bit like, um, might be a bit, what do you call it? Um, ambiguous because i don't know that there is a a house thing in here so i think we just want the allegiances inside um because i just don't know that it does have them unless i'm missing let's have a look so does it actually say inside there okay yeah so it just says which which they're in um so we just want to get this for everyone basically um rather than like oh yeah I, yeah that's all we want um I was temporarily confusing like allegiances with like an alliance but i guess like no i guess it's just the house so we type in map and we've got got like what do we want to do now to get a list um of all the like allegiances for our characters what should i type in there so the next argument uh just uh quote 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 um allegiances right yeah so that will give us a nice list um and we all the more so then how do we do this one let's call it names um how do we create a character vector NMS that holds the characters' names? I think the 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 clue is like you want it to be a character vector. So you're going to do something slightly different to what we did here. Um, Could you uh, print out the names of the the attributes again? Yeah, so you got names, uh, got one. You got these guys. Although well, Wafemi has his, has his hand raised. Oh, sorry, I can't see hand raises because I had the thing thing. Yeah, Alu Wafemi, I'm just un unmute your mic and whenever you're ready, just. Okay, so my question first is going to the. Uh, the first example, because we have map, then we pass in gods, then we pass in the allegiances, which give us a list. So I want to like know the allegiances in which, though I know it's part, can we say that is the function we are passing to the gods? Ah, uh, yeah. So I think you missed the very start, right? Um, there's this like shortcut um, when you're using map. Uh, we had it up here so where, 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 where is it um there yeah here like if you don't pass in a function so if you pass like a string of stuff that's in here map has this cool little shortcut that it will look inside this list for like this thing um and if you pass it just like a number well it will look for the third thing and it just how it happens to be like url id name name is the third thing so if you do this map you're extracting the attribute or the object that holds the attribute of name from each from each one of these which is the same thing as doing this um and it's, it's not obvious that that should be the case i think it's like they did this to make it a shortcut or something. Um, and if we change the number from three, um, so if we change it to four, well, we'll get like a different thing. And that thing that we'll get when we look at names will be the fourth thing. And that thing, the fourth thing is gender. And then we get this list of male, 
male, male, female. Um, so it, it's just that it's like it kind so, of. Okay, that means if we have a list of data frame, we can also use these same techniques to extract any specific data frame in which we are interested in. Yeah, or like any column, I would think. So if you've got like data frame x equals like one, y equals two. So let's just store this. Um, I think if you map my df, can you just do x? I don't know, you can't just do x, even though the names of the data frame. Oops. No, because maybe I said a list of data frame, that is list containing several data frame, then we can use the same techniques to extract. So if we had like, yeah, the actual things inside here, um, data dot frame, what, so I like x equals one, y equals, Two, but then you've got this other thing that's like data dot frame x equals three y equals four. So is that a well made list? That should be a well made data frame, right? Um, oh dear, do I need another? Yeah. So we were my dear. Hmm. Do I need? Does this need to be a list? Uh, this is already like <laughs> I don't want to do this. Um, oops. We got my dear. No, okay, it's not letting me. I'd have to actually like map in a list or something um, to make a list of tibbles or data frame data frames. I, I think you need to have the list wrapped around the data frame. So I yeah, I just once like yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. So in that one there, oops. So I think basically you could you could delete the the data frame like kind of looking on line one seventy one. Yeah. Drop off the data frame wrapper and then just um, have that's your list and then from there, yeah, all the elements would be would be data frames and I think you would get then what you want. We'd have but. So this would do a list. We'd have to list to, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Let's wait till we actually get some nice objects with data frames and we'll try to extract this way. Because um, if you were to like could map in. Anyway, let's, let's do it because I, I think we could do that. I just don't know if I could do it on the fly. Um, and we've got a couple of questions questions left. So how do we get this um, character vector of the names? So a couple of ways we could do that. We could always use a map map CHR. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then follow the approach uh, that we did above. So just have name, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then apply the name. So I'll just do this one quickly because apply the names. In NMS. So we got allegiances and we can go set names, NMS. And then we could call allegiances as that. Um, so reuse the code from above to collapse each character's vector of allegiances down to a string. So like this one's easy as well. But so we'd go allegiances. And then what we want to do. We're reusing some code. Should we just put in my fun? Um so I should just do it. So now we've got a list and they're all separated. Um and then this one, so like we said that any elements pass via ellipsis would be used as is. Um specifically, they're not used in a vectorized faction fashion what happens if you pass collapse equals this um now in my head i was thinking yeah it's not vectorized but will this this will either bring an error um or it will do it i wasn't sure so i just ran the code um and it does it but it takes the first argument um is that because, and I don't know why it takes the first argument. Like, I wonder if it's about 
lazy evaluation or something. I don't, like, I don't know if that even makes sense. That's, but, that's really not good design in a sense. Like, you know, you, I, I feel like you'd want that to loudly fail, right? Instead of mm-hmm. silently pass in a weird way. Yeah, exactly. I You'd think it should be like, no, you can't put in a vector here. Um, I wanted to go looking into like paste and into map to figure out why, but I figured it wasn't really the time. Um, but yeah, it does It does the first one um, and only the first one. When I, when it, oh, did I do like, I was like, oh, I'll just... <laughs> I'll make this like this and I'll set the names like this. And I forgot about the thing. So then they said to do names. So then I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it the proper way. And then, yeah, did the same stuff that you guys did. Um, ooh, we're kind of over, but there are two. I think we'll just do it for like really quickly. Um, when you've got lists of stuff, like two lists of things that you want to pass in like which is what you might have thought the ellipsis does so say we've got the names and the dates of birth when you want to do things with two lists and you want the first thing in this list the second thing of this list go together and and so on all the way down um you need to put in you need to use something like map two so you can use map two or map two underscore like char underscore logical um, you need a function that takes two arguments, so this function, um, and then you feed in dot x equals this, dot y equals this, dot f, and it will pass in for you um, x and dot x into here and dot y into here. Um, oh, wait, does it? Oh, yeah. Uh, so you see, like, it's kind of like, pasting stuff for you so this character the, the name they were born on or in this this thing um and you can be explicit with the formula notation and i actually think you kind of always should be when you're like map toing and stuff this feels like always risky or dangerous um but yeah you do the same thing pass in dx so i do think it really is helpful to always do this just so you know which one's which and you're always thinking what dot x is like it just helps you to uh, that must be dot x because i said it's dot x um but okay if you're doing it with two that's well and good but what about if you've got like three four five six seven eight nine ten uh you need to use pmap so in this case the data frame that we've got like um ah we've got we don't have a data frame of data frames, but we do have a data frame of lists uh, that we can maybe pluck stuff from. But say you've got your data frame, uh, you design a function that takes, in this case, you want to do it over all three of these things. Um, and this function takes three arguments. You do this, you instantiate your function, and then you call pmap char. Um, and what that's kind of doing is, um, kind of like let's see if um and then are you going dot l so like this data frame is the list dot f equals that you want to say dot f equals my fun and then you need to when you specify it like this is it what you're essentially saying is like in this list there is name aliases allegiances and you're saying i think you actually want it like this is it dot dot one like this dot dot two yeah i think that's right three but is that the right thing? it's gonna be a bit weird isn't it because it's is it dot l no. Or, or if or if the names if the names happen to match, like if, if you've constructed your data frame such the names match, then you can just pass it to the list, I think. Ah, nice. If memory yeah. serves. Yeah. Like in, in this case, yeah, yeah. That function takes them. Um yeah, nice. So if we do names df, like one dot dot one here is name dot dot two here is aliases and dot dot three is allegiances um but if 
this was like over anyone's head or anything. Like I, the first 10, 20 times I tried to use PMAP, just they were over my head, I think. Um, but we're going to look at those in more detail. Um, so thanks for coming, everyone. I'm just going to stop John. Um, yeah, next week, what we're scheduled to do is uh, we're scheduled to do the map family, um, but not map two and P map was what I was thinking. Um, having gone through all that, I don't know if that's going to be enough for a full session. Um, what do you guys think? <laughs>